Hello, everybody, and good morning. This is August. I'm sorry, it's not August. August is done. It's September 1, Rabbit Rabbit, 2023. Uh, this is Real Estate Talk TGIF, episode number 273, 270 weeks in a row. And we're real proud of that here at Real Estate Global and Modern Agent Group. And uh, we have uh, a really cool guy that I recently finally realized that we've known each other for a while. And uh, ran into each other at an event. Juan Rivera. Hey, Juan, thanks for so much for coming on today. Yeah, of course. My pleasure, Dave. Thank you for having me. So we're going to have a lot of fun today. We're going to talk about building agents' businesses and uh, what Juan has done and how he's looked at it a little bit differently. And it's just like very intriguing for me. I'm really interested. I'm really excited about this. But first, we've got to go to the video. Hit it, Nelson. Real estate agents, are you looking to acquire clients consistently to grow your business and income for a great lifestyle? Well, this is Dave Finale, and I'm here to bring you the Real Estate Skill Builder broadcast, Real Estate Talk TGIF, brought to you by Real Estate Skill Builder and the Modern Agent Team. Again, good morning, everybody. This broadcast is brought to you by Real Estate Skill Builder, my country coaching company, and my group called the Modern Agent Team. We're here to help you grow your business through the simple modern agent framework. If you're interested in joining and learning some, some really good things about client acquisition, go to the modernagentexperience.com, modernagentexperience.com, where you can register for our Wednesday sessions and you can come and be coached side by side as you're on the call to make a difference in other in sellers' lives to help them grow their sell their homes. Anyway, here we are, Juan Rivera, regional vice president, Christie's International Real Estate. So it's been a long road, it seems, but really the years go so fast. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you started uh, a while ago. I'm going to get to that question, but I have one pre preliminary question before we get into the content. It's really simple. What does TGIF stand for? TGIF. Uh, yeah. Thank God it's arriving. <laughs> you, you, know what? you know what, Juan? You're really, really close. I don't want to thank you for the attempt, but you're, you're partially incorrect. It's thank God it's finale. No question. You know, it's, you know, it's my broadcast. So I get to name it anything I want. Yeah. I didn't name the broadcast because of that. It just happened. Um, and uh, here we are. Real Estate Talk, TGI of episode 273. Juan, you, you, you're regional vice president of Christie's International Real Estate. But that's not where you started. Tell me a little bit about your journey and your path and, and different things that went along the line of from, you know, I guess almost 20 years ago. Talk to me about that. Yeah, it's been a, like you said, it, it has been a long journey, but it, it seemed like, it, you know, it was just yesterday that I started. Um, I uh, started my professional career in IT as a network systems engineer. So, you know, providing solutions for Fortune 500 companies. You know, I did that for several years, um, you know, just got tired of it and wanted to kind of challenge myself to do something else. And a friend of mine, uh, you know, one day said, hey, you should get into real estate. And at first I was a little hesitant because I'm I'm an introvert by nature. So it was a little tough for me to make that transition. You know, IT guys were typically antisocial. Um, yep. So it, it was a little tough for me to make that transition. But I, I gave it a shot. I said, hey, you know what? Let me I'm a young man. I need to be challenged. Let me let me see what I can do with this. And I entered the business as a, as a young agent at Century 21, very small shop in Bloomfield, New Jersey. Uh, did very well there. My second year in the business, I purchased the business. Fast forward to 2005, right before the, mar you know, the market went to, to, to crap, basically. I ended up selling the business, luckily. And I moved on to become an agent again at a different firm. And, uh, you know, did that for several years. Was very successful there. Um, you know, I was then asked to manage uh, for Caldwell Banker at the time. So I started doing that and I managed several of their top locations. Uh, but what I'm, what I'm really proud of and most excited about, um, you, you know, when it comes to my career, it's what I've done in, in the last five years, uh, you know, with the company that I'm with now, Christie's International Real Estate. So I'm really proud of the work that I've done there. Uh, and I think my agents have really benefited from that. So. Um, that's kind of been my journey. I just gave you some highlights there, but, uh, yeah, that, that's been the journey through, you know, that got me to where I'm, I'm at today. So obviously, Juan, thank you for that. Obviously through your, through your journey of, 
becoming an agent, an owner, an agent again, manager, et cetera, you know, you, you've, you've, you've gone along the steps and, and you've, you know, basically, you know, got up, going up the ladder. Right. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, what you've done at each stop has been to me impressive. Um, and I want to talk about what you've done over the past, you know, number of years um, relevant to uh, your office, your company and your team relating to an agent. Like, for instance, my specialty is working with the same agent. And, you know, it may sound strange, but the three types of agents that I work with are new agents, stuck agents and agents that want to scale from 10 to 40 approximately. I believe that they're all basically they have the same need, and I believe they're all the same mindset. You know, where that ones doesn't the first ones don't know what they don't know, the second ones think they know what they what they know, and the third ones know what they know, but they think they don't know, but they need help and they're stuck and they're confused. And it's along the same line of getting started again. But your journey and what you've done is a little bit different than that. So talk to me about you know over the last five years, you know that part that 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 you know, most important with what you've done with the current company you're with. Yeah, Dave. So, you know, the last five years, it, like I said before, you know, I, I did manage for, for, you know, Caldwell Banker at the time and that had its challenges, you know, but what was unique about the last five years is that I got the opportunity to launch a new market, basically a brand with a, a new market. And, you, you know, the way that relates well to agents is that, I had to go out there and I had to recruit, right? I had to recruit my team, bring in the team that I wanted and establish the culture that I wanted, but also bring a new brand to market. So the way that, again, the way that translates to an agent is that when you become an agent, you're basically bringing a new brand to the market, right? So right. It, it, it has a lot of correlation there. So but much. Also, yeah, but, but also, you know, just taking your team uh, bringing, bringing people in and giving them something where they can say, hey, you know what, by joining this team now, I can take my business to the next level. I can leverage the resources, the brand and everything else and take my business to the next level. Right. So that's how it correlates to an agent that's looking to enter the, the real estate industry or an agent that's in the industry already and it's looking to you know, expand their brand or grow a team with, with, within their current market. Right. So, so bringing a new brand to market, bring a new company office to market is the same as you said, I'm repeating you, but the same as you said, is a new agent coming to market because let's face it, every new agent, every agent, people say, what's your brand? Well, 20 years ago, you and I both would have said Century 21 is our brand because right. that's the franchise and the company that we were with or Century 21, you, Dan, Northside, whatever it was. Right. It was that company that was your brand. Nowadays, as things have gone on, because we've gone from a, a from a company centric and office centric market when I first got into the business in the late 70s to the 80s. And we've seen the evolution occur of office centric company broker centric company centric to agent team agent. So we see the transition of how the business has changed. And that's the only way the business has changed aside from technology. So when you come to market, when you went into Hoboken, New Jersey, and guys, we are both in New Jersey right now. So yeah. all those that are watching it live or, or watching it later on, we're, we're two New Jersey guys here working our butts off in this market in Northern New Jersey. So, but a little different market in Hoboken than the rest of New Jersey. So talk to me about, you know, it, it's almost like, and correct me if I'm wrong, it's almost like parachuting into a new market and having to start from scratch. Talk to me about what you had to do to get started. Oh yeah. It's, uh, it was a lot of work. Um, but it, it, the first thing I did, I came in and I said, all right, let me, let me analyze the market. Who's here. What's going on. What's the market cap. Who's who has what, right. Well, who has what kind of market share and where, where do we fit into all of that? You know, from a brand, from, you know, uh, uh, from our, our goals, like what is it that we're trying to accomplish? So I had to go through an entire identification process, you, you know, for the company that I was trying to bring in, into the market. Once I, I figured all that out, um, you know, we got to work. And, and initially, 
it, 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 the most important thing was how do we fit into this market, right? And how do I get this message out there? How do I start tapping into that? So what I started doing, I started talking, I started identifying which agents fit into what we're trying to accomplish and which agents fit into the brand that I'm trying to bring to market. So after identifying those individuals, I started talking to them and, and, and articulating the value that you know, we would bring to them, their business, and how they can help us contribute what we're, we're looking to deliver to, to, to the market. So it, it was a very strategic strategy that we put in place or that I put in place. And, and the way we executed, we did it in phases. Phase one, like I said, was to identify our place in the market. Phase two was, all right, who can help me bring this message or accomplish my goals within the market? And then number, you know, phase three of that, uh, of the whole process was just execution, purely execution. Um, you know, where uh, what most people would do is, is go for the top right away. What I did was I identified that load hanging fruit and said, hey, you know, what, what is it that I need to tap into in order to start dripping my message out there and start letting the public see who we are and what we're doing different? Right. So that really helped the process just kind of get the gears going. And eventually it just created a snowball effect and the message started getting out there. So we started creating a perception that we were new, we we're bringing something that customers needed, and we we're also bringing something that agents needed. So so let me look at this and talk about this a little bit in a respect how I would look at it and an, a new, a, a, an individual agent would look at it. So um, their place in the market is, is, is new, right? And basically what you did, in my opinion, is you decided, okay, what's the market like how do I how do I inject myself into this market? Because what we've got is different than what's out there. So basically, right away, you're looking at something that I hold very dear to my heart, which I call the art of differentiation, yeah. right? How are you differentiating yourself from everything out there in the market? So the first thing you had to do, and every agent needs to do this, if they believe me or not, it's okay, is you need to understand who you want to work with, right? Wow. Which was the first thing that you did is you you were in your market, you knew what your market was. And then you say, okay, who's going to help me do this? Which is just to the individual agent. Who do you want to work with that's going to help you ba basically build your business quicker? I call that the perfect client avatar. Okay. Right. There's lots of ways to look at it, but that's the way I look at it. Correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. And then once you did that, you had to set up strategies to go after that individual or that client that customer profile in order to get them to work with and then to execute your plan of building a listing inventory a buyer inventory getting clients closing transactions etc cetera, etc cetera, and knowing and it's the same thing you're going to go you you must have gone through is sometimes you don't have the right avatar but you got to work with them anyway correct yeah. Right. So does, does that kind of like put it in, in, in a different term for you? Absolutely, Dave. And look, I, I, I work with a lot of agents. I coach a lot of talent. Uh, I've coached a lot of top talent um, that, you know, anyone that's in the New Jersey market may recognize. And and I apply, I, I apply that same strategy with every agent. Right. So when, when an agent comes to me, whether they're new, um, slightly used, right, or, or a top yeah. agent looking to triple their business, Right. Uh, I take the same approach with them. I'm like, hey, you, you know what? You're 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 someone that's already established in the market. Let's say it's a middle of the line agent coming in. You're someone that that's established already in the marketplace somewhat, but you've you've hit this glass ceiling. So yep. the first thing I try to do is understand their business. What is it that? What does their business look like, right? And what are they really good at? Right. We want to focus on that because they're already good at it. We don't have to work that hard at bringing up that skill set. And then we, we triple down on that because it's already working for them. And then but the most important part is really identifying what they're lacking, what their weaknesses are, uh, where is it that they're getting stuck and then putting a plan in place to strategically go after that, to, to start working on that one at a time and then compound those activities to get them to where they need to be. But but I'll back it up a minute, you, you know, and, and I'll go back to identifying your place in the market sure. is, you know, like you said, who is, who's your client? So when, when a client thinks about me, the agent, what do I want that to resonate with? 
with, right? Is it is it luxury? Is it um, you, you know the guy that's selling five six hundred thousand dollar properties? Is, is it a brownstone market? Is it a single family market? Residential, commercial? What is my niche? What do, what do I want my customer to think about when they think of me? And then you start developing a brand around that, and 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 creating that snowball effect based on that foundation. Um, but but like I said, we. I try to get them to focus on what they're already good at because that's, that's an easy in, you know, where, where I feel like most people want to want to focus on the things that they're not doing or they're not great at because they feel like that's what's holding them back. Yes, we, we can get to that, but we need to focus on what you, you are good at so that we can build that momentum for you. You know, you know what? I, I was just thinking about, you know, we talk, I talk about, I talk about it all the time, the perfect client avatar. And I also, I always remember when I do my Wednesday sessions, we have lots of agents here. We had 13 here this week and set 30 appointments, which was really cool. Um, and I try to talk to them about being social and what they're looking for in social, because that's where it really has to come from in our day and age today. Right. And when I talk about perfect client avatar, I get sometimes I, and I explain it, Sometimes I get these like blank stares, right? So help me along here and let's talk about that for a minute. And, and, and I'm not sure if I'm doing it right. So if we're talking about perfect client avatar, we're talking about who they want to work with. Isn't it, isn't it just simply you want to work with the people like you? Yeah, can be, right? I, is there a better yeah. way to explain yeah. that? that? That, that's the, that's, that's the easiest way in. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll give you a couple of different scenarios. I had an agent that came to me and said, hey, I, I want to do high end. I want to focus in the luxury market. I want to do that. Th this person was not someone that lived that lifestyle. But that's right. what they wanted. That's the market that they wanted to be in. So we said, great, let's build a brand around that. Let's create a perception that you are the face of luxury. Right, the new face of luxury, and let's build around that. So, you know, we did PR, we did, I mean, we, we built this entire uh, machine around this agent that basically, uh, you know, emulated high end real estate. Uh, you know, we, we didn't lie, we didn't, you know, use any deceiving type of techniques, but we, we basically just said, hey, this is the new face of luxury real estate. And then they started showcasing a ton of luxury real estate. We started doing PR. They started attending high-end events, et cetera, things that, that that client would resonate with. And eventually it started working, right? So I think that, I think that an agent can tap into any market that they want. However, right. the easiest way in, like you said, is to go after the people that are like you because you will easily connect with them. Easily, just organically connect with them. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm just going to give you another another quick story. A, a friend of mine, and his his name is Sal Ventry. He wanted to get into the luxury market down ashore, Jersey Shore, and he just started to 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 dress the dress the part, go to fancy restaurants, dress the part. Always went to the grocery store in a in a in a, in a suit. Um, always went that way and lived it that way. I think he even joined country clubs and stuff. Yeah. But he wanted to emulate that he was the he was the 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 the, the, the multi million dollar agent. And Sal's done very very well for himself. And, and he's a but you know a lot of hard work and a lot of hard sacrifice. Um, so when we're talking about okay, so the next step after that is to execute what you're doing and to be able to. Um, Find out what the agent is really good at, okay? And then triple down on that is what you said, right? So when you've got a new agent, what are you looking for to find out what they're really good at? We first look at their, their background. What is their background? Uh, you know, where, where, what can we tap into or latch on to? Uh, that can help them in the real estate industry, right? So, for instance, if, if if we have someone that already has a sales background, someone that was already making a lot of calls or, you know, knocking on doors or doing right. things like that, then we're going to focus on that because th they were already doing that. Um, so it, it, it's important to really find these, you, you, you know, these, these skills 
that are relatable to real estate that they can translate to real estate. So a new agent is a little trickier, right? Because you have to focus more on, on their previous uh, experience uh, and then try to see how you can mechanically apply that to real estate. Uh, so that, that's what I typically do with a brand new agent. And, you know, you, you start from the bottom, Dave. You start with the basics. Hey, we're, we're going to, you know, get your, your headshot. We're going to compile your sphere of influence, um, you know, build a database around that. Just let yes. people know that you're in real estate, et cetera. So all the basics, but then also figure out, okay, hey, what are you good at? If you were a telemarketer in your past life, I'm going to put you on those phones and I'm going to yes, start no. having you, you know, yeah. making those calls. So, yeah, yeah. You, you know, that that's kind of what I mean by let's figure out what you're good at and triple down on that. And then we'll, we'll bring the rest up to speed later. Okay. So the big question when we talk about, you know, getting started and doing your business and doing what you've got to do or what I think you've got to do. Look, I look at it. I look at it that there's, I know there's a lot of pillars of our business that we can we can inject, but I firmly believe the number one pillar is the sphere of influence, then lead generating by using the phone and in person, et cetera, et cetera, which would lead us to FISBOs, expires, withdrawals, social media, open houses, and circle prospecting. So I, those are my seven pillars that I work off of. And one of the biggest problems we have there is the fear of, you know, of ourselves, the fear of our past, the fear of rejection, right? Um, what do you think aside from that? Because people want to are looking at the shiny, the shiny objects, looking for the silver bullet. Um, how do we get into their mindset and get into their heads that, hey, you can do this, you can do anything you want in this business? Because for me, it's not a matter of memorization, it's a matter of knowing what you're going to do when you get there, when you get the appointment, because then you're confident of that and bringing it back to calls. What do you think about that? I, I, you know, Dave, I love this question. And I typically tell the agent, listen, just look at me, for example. I'm an introvert by nature. I really don't like crowds. I hate small talk. Uh, but when I enter real estate, I realized that this is what I needed to do in, in order for me to be successful. Right. Dave, the first time I picked up the phone to make a call call, my hands were shaking, literally. Yeah. I, I couldn't even put it to my ear. And, it, you know, the next step was they finally picked up the call and I hung up, right? Because I didn't know what to say. That call. <laughs> then, you know, little by little, I started getting comfortable on the phones. And one day I said to myself, I said, you know what? If I'm going to succeed at this, I need to have fun with it. And, and I shared a little, you know, fast forward to when I started actually enjoying the challenge was when I called someone and they just went off on me. They F-bombed me, told me never to call them. You know, they hope I die. Everything bad that you can think of. And they hung up the phone on me. And I said to myself, man, that was, that was brutal. But I laughed it off. And I picked up the phone and I called them back. And I said, hey, I'm sorry. I believe we got disconnected. And they started laughing on the other end. We ended up having a great conversation on the phone. I didn't get any business out of this person. But we started having, you know, we had a great conversation on the phone. But that... That's the reality of it. It, it. It's it's just losing that fear. It's just getting used to it, having fun with it, not taking it personal. It, it's the key to breaking that barrier. And, and I right. have another story with you that I can share with you later, but I have so many embarrassing moments throughout my career. I, I, we can be here for hours. So, you know, we, 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 we do the calls every day. I'm here making the calls with the agents. And, and two things I look at with what you just said, getting hung up on. Okay, so um, I... I, I I, I, I love the, the, the callback, but there's a, I, I like, I, I, I talk, talk about another one. Instead of that day, you call them the next morning and say, earlier the next morning, and say, hey, look, uh, we, we, we spoke, spoke briefly yesterday, but before you hang up on me again, I just got one question for you. And then you shut the hell up. And it's, it, it, it's like, okay, what do you want? Or they hang up on you again. You just keep calling them every day. Talking about having fun with it, you know, I had an agent just this morning. You know, um, you know, I heard them in the call. And that's one of the things I do is I stand next to these people as they're making the calls and we help each other grow their business. They tell me about my calls too. So he said, oh, you're not interested. Oh, okay, you're not interested. Gets them off the phone. And I said, hey, man, don't you just say this. If they say I'm not interested, say to them, okay, you're not interested. What if you were interested? What would be the qualities of the real estate agent you want to work for you? 
to me, that's having a little fun with it, taking what they said and just turning around on them. It's a matter of having fun, as you said, and, and taking the nerves out of it. Look, I know, and I've been saying it for years, this thing, it's a phone now, it weighs 700 pounds, and it is so hard to pick up. And then when we hit the buttons, and we used to use that phrase called dial a number, which nobody knows what dial means, but they know that they got to push in the number. And then when you hit send, that's the second hardest thing. And then the third hardest thing is all you're doing is wishing for voicemail. Because when you yep. hear that ring, you're saying voicemail, voicemail, voicemail. And, and, and that happens all the time. So it, it's, it's hard to get over that. So the question is, how did you get over it? You said you did it by, by having fun with it. But, you know, that you say you're an introvert, but having fun with it would mean something, might mean something different. And I get that because it's me too, right? I was always been shy. People say, Dave, you're shy? Yeah, I am, believe it or not. Um, and that's part of my problem when I get on the call. So aside from that, is it is it repetition? Is it role play? Is it practice? What is it that will also help you get over making those calls? It, it's believing that what you have is a tremendous value to the person on the other on the other side of that phone. If you believe that that individual, you should not deprive that individual of your services or or this great value that you would bring to them. That'll help you with that challenge. And and, and look, Dave, I, I I remember you know my first day as an agent. I called a banker. I went from a my average sell price was like $250,000 at Century 21. After I sold the business, you know, here I was, this big shop, this guy that owned a brokerage, you know, built it up, trained talent, uh, you know, now went back to sales. And I, I thought I was unstoppable, right? But what I didn't realize was that I was entering a new market that I wasn't comfortable with, that I really didn't know what kind of value I was bringing to the marketplace. And I'll never forget that, you know, when we would, did floor time, I don't know if you remember that, but I, do. Uh, I, I got my first call. It was a high-end listing. It was over a million dollars. I went on this listing appointment, literally day 15 seconds into my presentation. The client said, stop, you're not the guy, you have to go. And wow. yeah, cold turkey. And, you know, I got it. I, I'll never forget this. I got in my car and I drove away because I, it, it was one of the most embarrassing moments of, of my career. And I, I drove around the corner and I said, what the hell happened in there? What, what happened? You know, I, I thought I was great at this. And what I realized was that I brought nothing of value to the table. I didn't believe in what I was saying. I was just, I was just talking. You know, and, and the passion wasn't coming across. So I went back to the lab and I said, that would never happen to me again. And, and Dave, that was a defining moment in my career. I could have I could have went. I could have exited the, the industry because it was so brutal on me. And I said, you know what? It will never happen to me again. So I went back to the lab and I started figuring out what was my value? What was it that I was bringing to this individual? So to answer your question is really believing that what the, the customer on the other side of that line, uh, they cannot live without this incredible value that you're bringing to the table, that if they sell this house with anyone else other than you, or if they buy a house with anyone else other than you, that they will be deprived of one of the greatest services that can be provided in real estate. So if you truly believe that and that passion comes across that conversation, Trust me, they will listen. They will stop. They will give you that appointment. They will talk to you. And that's what got me through it was that I truly believed in every word that came out of my mouth. And I still live by that to this day. If I don't believe in what I'm selling or what I'm saying, I, I need to make a change. Something has to change. Did you ever screw up and say things you didn't know what you're talking about and believe, believe it with passion? Because agents, you know the agent that's getting ready to get ready forever in their lives and never going to do more than five, six deals a year. They're getting ready to get ready. And they if they don't believe in what they're saying, you know, they're going to they're gonna walk away or they won't do it. Or if, or if they're going to fumble, they're not going to do it. I mean, basically, I what I try to tell people is, look, if you get into a situation where 
you know, all of a sudden you start fumbling and you don't even know what the hell's coming out of your mouth. Just do it with passion. <laughs> you, I'm you sorry. Know, they, the biggest thing, right? And I'm actually working on a workshop, right? On listing presentation. And, and I'm, I'm changing the, the I, I don't want to call it a listing presentation anymore. I want agents to, to, to see it as a listing conversation. And, and I'm, I'm working on putting together a workshop that it, it's about that. And the, the issue that we as realtors have is that we talk too much, right? Hell yeah. The, the minute someone asks you a question, you just start rattling on. Just answer the question and stop talking. And sure. it, so it, ask more and be straight to the point. When someone asks you, hey, what's your commission rate? 6% and stop talking. Don't try to justify it because the exactly. minute you try to justify it, you lost the game already. Exactly. Let's let's face it. You know, I tell this to agents and I the same point, I just put it a little bit differently. And what I do is remember, have you ever lied? Come on, everybody, a little kid, you may have lied. Maybe you did once or what you know. What happens is when someone asks you a question, you're gonna lie, you just talk a lot. Yeah. If you say, No, I didn't do it, you're more believable. Because yeah. if you say, no, I didn't do it because I was here and, and this happened and all this other shit. No, you're making excuses and you lie. You're lying, right? Yeah. So the simple thing is the one. It's like the, the, the best answer in the world for people is the word no. And just shut up, right? So, I mean, well, that, that's well, the question, right? So so when, when someone says, hey, I think your commission rate is too high. Um, I, I can understand that. What part of the, the my value proposition do you think is not worth that? And stop talking, right? Now right. let them justify to you that your commission is too high and why. <laughs> you know? Right. So, so, the, so, yeah, the absolute is really for me, if it's over the phone or if it's in the, in the, in the presentation, it's really active listening. And active listening, you know what it is as well as I do. It's, it's ask a question, listen, listen, listen to the answer, repeat the answer, approve the answer, ask your next great question, and then shut up, you know, just let them answer. The biggest problem I think with a lot of agents, one is that they're thinking of the next question and they're not listening. Yeah. Right. That's, that's one of the problems. And that's why I say, make sure you bring a notepad or when you're on the phone, have a notepad and write it down. So everything that you and I have been doing, and I've been talking about this forever, I write down notes of what we're talking about are things I might want to go back to. And if I have another question for you or something I want to get into, I've got it written down in front of me. I don't have to remember it. So I can spend my time listening to you because I know if I've got it down there, I'm not going to hear a word you say. And this is going to sound like a stupid interview like most of the other broadcasts we watch and do. But this is I want this. I always wanted this to be more interactive. And that's what I make sure I do. And I do it in different colors, as you can see. So, you know, I, that's how I do it. And I have three color pens on my desk when I'm, that I'm talking. And you can do the same thing. And it's really important to listen. And you said you want to call it the listing conversation. I like to call it the list, the listening presentation rather than a listing presentation. That makes sense too. Absolutely. You know? So, and, and it's just, I mean, it's just so cool. So um, how, how do we get from being a new agent, a stuck agent, an agent that, that really wants to build our business, one with the passion um, and how do we get them to learn actually how to sell? I mean, Nobody wants to hear, you know, like the old version of salesmen and telling everybody how great you are and everything else. We talked about this the other day about we're, we're not helping the agent by, by we're not teaching the concept. And I yeah. love this what process that you came over with. So talk a little bit about that for me. Yeah, it, it's, you, you know, I found that this has been the most, the, the, the one thing that has been really successful uh, when, it, when I'm coaching an agent or, or you know, helping them build their business um, is teaching them concept. I, I feel like, you know, we have a, a lot of incredible coaches out there, a lot of great um, uh, workshops that agents can go to and, you know, but, but we're trying to tell them what to say and tell them what to do instead of teaching them the concept of what it is that they should be doing. And, and I, you know, let, let me take it back a little bit to the phone, right? Teaching the concept of that, uh, of what a call should be, right? This way they can apply it to anything. They can apply it to real estate. They can apply it to, to whatever they want. So 
when it comes to phone calls, right? Because phone calls, is, it's like, I think at the top when it comes to the greatest fear that an agent has, right? Yeah. Break it into pieces, right? So when you make that call, what is the first thing you want to do? Get the appointment, right? Just get the appointment. Don't sell them over the phone. Don't do anything. Hey, I heard you're selling your property at 123 Main Street. I would love to stop by. It's Friday, 1 o'clock a good time, That's right? Great. Get in. Get the appointment. Uh, you know, I'm not looking to list. Great. You know, I'm just looking to look at the property. It's Friday, 1 o'clock, a good time. You know, it's just, that. that's it. One piece at a time. Don't try to sell the client. So if you teach them that concept that, hey, your, your job right now is to come in and apply that to everything else that comes after, you'll get the appointment eventually. So teaching them concept, same thing with selling. Uh, if, you teach any, if you teach someone how to sell anything, they can sell real estate. They can sell a value proposition. They can sell a marketing strategy. They can sell anything to anyone. So what I like to do with my agents, I teach them concept so that they, then anything you throw at them, they can take it, rewrap it, and apply it to whatever it is that they're doing. So concept, I think, is critical. And, and you know, a lot of people ask, well, hey, you know, can you really define what concept is? Just look it up yes. on the dictionary. You know, concept is really internalizing a process and being able to apply that process to anything else. So, all right, I get that. I, I'm going to uh, talk like a new age. I, 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 I get that. The concept is to sell. But how do I do that without telling them all the facts and figures of, of everything I know over the phone? Well, your on the phone, your job is to get the appointment, Dave. You're not there to sell. You're never going to sell a client over the phone. It's not going to happen. Get in front of the client. I and I, I said that knowing what the answer was going to be, and the reason I say it is because, you know, as much as I try to coach that and train that, uh, I still hear agents telling them, "Well, you know, I can do, I can, I can get you more money for your house." No, they don't give a shit what you can do because they don't care for you. I think the most important thing is that is to understand the concept. Getting the appointment is number one. And number two, you also always have to remember, you got to figure out what's in it for them. Whether you're on the appointment or trying to get the appointment, I mean, you're not going to tell them why. You're not going to give them the statements over the phone because let's, let's remember, if you're telling them stuff over the phone, it's about you. If you're asking them a question, it's a question, it's about them. Whether it's in the phone, on the phone, or in the appointment. That is so critical, I believe. What do you think about, about the concept of asking questions? Uh, I, I think... I think 70% of what comes out of your mouth should be questions um, when, when you're speaking to someone because then it shows a genuine interest in what their goals are. What is it that they're trying to accomplish? And then you can take all that information and build your story, build your pitch around that and, and provide a solution and truly provide a solution for that client. Um, you, you know, So you should definitely go in there and ask as many questions as possible and really try to understand what the client's goal is, and then what is their goal for that property that, that they're thinking about selling? Because there's always two goals. There's the goal for the property, and then there's the goal for the client, right? The goal for the property could be, I want to maximize my return on this investment, right? And then what is the goal for the client? Get to Florida in the next six months or three months right. or whatever it is. Right. So right. you, you want to really understand every aspect of that client and their needs before you can provide a solution. If you go in there and just start spitting out solutions, then you're basically giving them your standard cookie cutter um, uh, uh, value prop that everyone else is giving them, you, you know? So listen yeah. a lot more. And that's what I mean by concept. See, that's a strategy. That's a concept that you're going to go in and you're going to apply. You can apply that, like I said, to real estate. You can apply it to car sales. You can apply it to, to, to anything. Look, Dave, I'll give you a perfect strategy. One of my cousins asked me to go to buy a car with him, right? I said, great, let, let's do it. And the guy at the dealership, uh, it's a Mercedes he was looking at. And the guy's like, hey, do you want night vision? And my cousin looked at me and he's like, do I need night vision? And I said, I don't know. You know, does he need night vision? You know how there's new technology in the cars. Yep. Uh, night vision uh, option. So... The guy was like, yeah, it's a cool option. Everyone wants it, right? You, you should definitely get it. This is a $3,000 upgrade. 
And I had to stop the guy. And I said, look, he's not, he's not going to get night vision. But what you should, should have done from the very beginning is really understand why he's buying this car, you know, what his fam family dynamics are so that you can sell them these things. And I said, look, instead of saying, hey, do you want night vision? Why don't you say this? Why don't you say, hey, you live, you, you live out west, right? And, and in rural New Jersey, there's not a lot of uh, lights uh, in the ro on the roads going home, right? And my cousin's like, yeah, no, that, that's true. And you have children, you have small children. So imagine you driving down one of those dark roads at night and a deer pops out. Think about the safety of your family. Don't you think night vision would be a good option? See, it's really not. And my cousin was like, oh, yeah, I want night vision. <laughs> you know, he looked at me and he was like, I want night vision. So that's a concept of selling. It's understanding the client, their needs, and how you can apply that value to it. And, and that's, a, that's a great point into the next, the, the part two of the concept question, which is, what you did there with the night vision thing is you, you actually built a story along with it. And we talked about that the other day when we were on, when, when we were talking and you talked about, you know, what's driving that client and that you're going to get there through the questions. But the reason you want to know about that is to build a story. Talk to me about building a story in that presentation. Yeah, Dave, I, you know, I, I teach all my agents to go in and, and you, you know, if you, ha if you haven't done the walkthrough of the property yet, do it with the client and ask a lot of questions about the property and ask a lot of questions about why that client purchased that property. And, you know, things like, hey, what what attributes of this home, you, you know, stood out to you when you looked at it? What made you buy this property? You, you know, what's the one thing that you really were passionate? What What's the one thing that you think is going to sell this home? You know, and, and when the client is telling you all these things, you can start taking these pieces that are dear to them and start injecting that into the conversation. And, you know, let, let's say they bought it because it has an incredible backyard and they saw themselves and their family live, you, you know, enjoying that backyard during, during holidays. So when you're talking about professional photography, then talk up, inject those pieces into it and say, Mr. And Mrs. Seller, you, you know, my job as your agent is to tell a story of your home and to make sure that at first look, when a client goes on Zillow, one of these portals, and they see your home, that they see the story that we're trying to tell. We capture that through professional photography. So I want to capture that backyard, and I want that next individual that's looking at this property to envision themselves enjoying that backyard because we capture it in such a way through professional photography. So now your professional photography solution for that client seems like it's much more than just photography, because you're, you're enhancing it by capturing the essence of the back of the, the backyard and, and the pool and everything else so that that individual can envision themselves in there. So again, it's using the pieces that you're collecting along that conversation to inject it back into your value per. Make sense? You know, a hundred percent, because as you were describing that and talking about that, I was envisioning people in the pool. I was envisioning the pool in the backyard and what people were doing there and, the, and all the other things going on. I was envisioning that. I was envisioning entertaining and what I could do. I love to entertain. And I, I was envisioning that. And that's what you were building there. You were building, you were building the story. Um, but remember Dave, that that client bought the property because of the backyard. So they're not gonna disagree with you that that's a great strategy, right? They're gonna say, absolutely, we need that. So it's just connecting with the client. Yeah, and it's, it's it, the questions are so important when you're doing that. And, and the, the number one question is, what, do you, what, what got you to buy the house, which is what you just did. And as well as one question I would ask is, where do you hang out and why? You know, where do you hang out and why? I mean, my house, I hang out in my kitchen, right? I hang out in my kitchen, not in the living room, right? I hang out in the kitchen. I don't know. I I, I just think it's just where I spend most of my time because I love cooking. You know what? I just, I sit at the counter and just, you know, whatever, whether I'm going to, I got some work to do at the end of the night or, you know, early in the morning, I'm checking stuff out. Um, but I love to do that and sit outside. So that's that's the, the, the process of, of building uh, the concept of selling the home as well as the, the pictures being a story. Um, and stories are always the best way 
to build um, to build a marketing campaign. Um, what what do you think is 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 we we we've, we've talked about new agents and we've talked about agents that want to grow, but what about the next agent uh, that I mentioned earlier, which is someone that wants to they're doing a certain amount of business, they're in a they're in they're doing well, but they want to do better. So scaling your business. So what do you what is important? For agents as well as teams and and offices, what's important for scaling business for growing exponentially? Process, procedures, and systems. I, I, is, those are the three things that will help you accomplish all the things that you just said. And the one thing, and those are the things that most agents lack. I. I I've taken on agents that have great businesses, um, Dave, and, and you know people that are doing already 30 million in, in business, but just don't know how to get to 50. And 90% of the times is because they have no process procedures or systems in place. You can't scale without that. So that is the, 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 the one thing that most agents um, should focus on. It's make, from the beginning, from day one, whether you're new, whether you're middle of the line, you, you know, trying to get to where you're trying to get to, or whether you consider yourself a top agent. If your goal is to continue to grow, you need processes, you need systems, you need procedures in, in, in place. It, it, it has to happen. Otherwise, you're, you're going you're gonna to get stuck. You're not going to grow. Is there one system more important than the other? Process. Process is, is, is key. Look, the first thing I have every agent focus on, if they're looking to grow their business, if let's say they're already established, but they're looking to grow, we look at every process. And the reason why I have them do that is because you want everything to look the same. And by the yep. same, I mean, if you're going to list the home, what is the process, the core process for that home? That should look the same. Yes, you're going to do things differently based on the needs of the, of, the, of the client and the home, based on different price points, et cetera. But the core process should look the same. And I have agents that don't have an assistant and I don't let them get an assistant until they have their core process in place for the basic things, for buyers, for sellers, post-closing, et cetera. Because that'll bring consistency to their business and consistency brings additional business in our industry, right? So yep. process is the key thing. Systems, you, you know, you can figure that out later, but process, it's, it's, you have to document the process and you have to be able to follow it. I, re I really love you saying that where, you know, you, you're not going to let them get an assistant until they understand that and build their own process. Because so many times I hear agents say, well, yeah, I want to hire a virtual assistant to do my prospecting for me. Or I'm going to hire an assistant and have them set this process up for you. Guys, I'm going to tell you that um, the best process, the best business is built by you. That, In my opinion, that you understand, that you understand every segment of it so that you bring in the right person that might be better at something than something than you are, but after you built it. So I think you've really got to self-experience what you're going to do and what you want to do. Maybe you don't have all the answers and that's where a coach or uh, a mentor come in, mostly a coach. Um, but you really, I mean, I really can't emphasize enough. You've got to be able to be proficient at something to under, or understand what you want and how you want it done. Because let's remember, number one, you are your own boss. And if you're not making money and you're not doing well, you suck as your own boss. So in order to get better, okay, where am I lacking? Where do I need help? And that's where you go first, and it's process. It's absolutely process. Then you can get somebody else. Would you agree with what I just said? Absolutely. D Dave, look, it, it, real, to, to be a successful realtor, right, you, you need many, many components, right? You have to be a marketing expert. You have to be a cold calling expert. I, I mean, you have to be good at it, pretty much everything. You, you don't have to be the best at it, but you have to be good at it, right? Or right. Understand, understand the concept of it. But I think every agent needs to think like a CEO. Additionally, they should have a very mechanical approach to everything that they do. And, and the reason why I say mechanical is because you can't get, when you look at things in a mechanical factor, you can't get from point A to point B without going through B and C. 
So it's very important for agents to understand that if they're going to set up a process, if they're going to understand systems. And I think that's where my IT background has really helped is that I have a very mechanical approach to everything. And, and, and having a mechanical approach to everything brings consistency and consistency brings results, period. So I agree with you a thousand percent and I want every, I wish every agent would just stop doing business by default and doing business on purpose because when you do it on purpose, you're taking a very mechanical approach to it. But does that does that leave us to be no no? I, I'm, I'm, there's nothing wrong. I I have no. I, I agree with you 100. percent Sometimes what happens though is when agents get busy, they they're more reactional and just tends to make them more transactional than relational. Okay, there's a lot of alls in there. <laughs> but the thing is, is that I, I, it, it's important that one of their processes be relational. Would you? Agree? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. But but that's what I mean. You have to be a lot of different things in order to be successful yes. in our field. Yes. Um, you know, and, and Tom Ferry says it best. Put on your CEO hat, right? That that's that's like his favorite line. Put on your CEO hat and be a CEO. When you when you're CEO, you're looking at operations, you're looking at marketing, you 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 are looking at public relations, you're looking at, at everything. You're looking at you know mechanics. You have to look at everything. You have to really understand every piece of it. And look, I don't want people to get bogged down and say, hey, I, I need to come up with a process before doing something. No, you can you can start doing things and yes. then say, all right, this is working out. Now let me take a step back and put a process in place to make it better. Formalize it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. I want agents to dive in. Don't stop and spend the next three years preparing for your first sale. Don't do that. Like go out there. Just do it. You, you know, you'll figure it out along the way. And then when you're in it, when you're knee deep, then start coming up with processes for what you're already doing. And then the rest will work itself out. Yeah, th this, this whole, this whole uh, past hour have been, has been really great. I got, I got two more questions for you. Yeah. Um, okay. This is, this is, I, I've asked top agents all over the country, top people that have been on this broadcast, on this broadcast, um, people doing, you know, 100 million in, by themselves, people doing 700 million on their teams. I've asked them the same question. And I'm going to pose this question to you because I think you're very qualified to answer this. Life or death situation, you got to get a listing in one week. How are you going to do it? Oof. One way? <laughs> I, I don't care. You need a listing in seven days. How are you going to do it? Uh, Dave, I'm going to pick up that phone. I'm going to start calling expireds. I'm going to start calling you know, for sale by owners because they're motivated. Yep. Right. That is um, the answer I get everywhere. Yeah. It basically in a nutshell, I'm going to pick up the phone. I'm going to start calling people, whether it's my sphere, my past clients, right. expires, uh, fist balls, doesn't matter. I'm going to pick up the phone. I'm going to start calling people because the rate of return on those efforts are, are, are really high. So I, I active, that. it's active, right? I can yeah. control that. So, so I add you to the list of, of great agents in this on this broadcast that have answered this same way. Look, I've even asked the um, the guy who founded um, a, a company called Jack, uh, Channel Junkies, Jesse Dow, who bases his entire business, 21 markets he works in throughout the country. I asked him this. Everything's YouTube. I asked him the same question. He gave me the same answer. So. Guys, understand that YouTube is great. Social media is great. But this is the way you're going to get business when it really comes down to the to the nitty gritty. So, man, I want to thank you so much for being on this broadcast. The one question I have left for you is, how do I help you grow your business? How do you help me grow? Well, you just did, Dave. I mean, I learned from you in this conversation, you, you know. And watching your YouTube videos are fantastic. I actually took some time last night and started going through a lot of your episodes a lot of great content. Um, so if, if, if you haven't taken the time yet to jump in and look at past videos that they have done, I, I highly recommend that you do. He's fantastic. So you, you. you're already you're already helping me, brother. So thank you. Thank you so much. And last but not least, you did hear what happens at the end of this broadcast. And that was the main reason you came on. Absolutely. Yeah. I want my so, hat. <laughs> yep. Your hat will be coming to you. 
Hey guys, next week we've got, uh, let me see, we've got, oh, oh, you know what? I am so sorry. Here is the way to reach this young man here. Uh, that is his Instagram. It's Jay Rivera. That's Instagram. At, it's Jay Rivera and Jay Rivera Christie's R-E-N-N-J dot com. And that's how you reach this guy. I'm sorry I didn't ask you that before. Didn't put it up earlier. But guys, next week we've got um, we've got uh, Bob Carbuccio coming on, who is an NLP and uh, trainer with Transform.us. He's going to be joining us next week. Really looking forward to that. Um, we like to bring forward all different kinds of people, all different kinds of coaches, trainers, agents. We've done a lot with AI lately, uh, and we will continue to bring you know spot on stuff for the market. Again, you know we're 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 only here to help as many agents as possible and to bring them a lot of business, producing business. My number one goal every day when I wake up is to help 100 agents become producing agents in the next 12 months. If you want to be one of them, join our join our red, join our Wednesday sessions, modernagentexperience.com. Juan, I want to thank you so much for being on today. It's been a pleasure uh, renewing our relationship and talking to you more. I look forward to collaborating with you in the future on anything uh, that you want to, and we'll be there. And, and guys, again, thank you so much, Juan. I appreciate you. Yeah, thank you, Dave. Appreciate Sweet. you guys. Yeah. Just stay on for one second as we go out. Thanks again. We'll see you all next week. Hit it, Nelson. Hey. 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 Hey.